thanks for having me here. Um, it's a little bit different from what you just heard, uh, especially because you don't have to go anywhere. Um, and the age range is very restricted because we're, we're just taking teeth that fall out on their own, although we do take teeth if they get extracted for any reason. So um, you can contribute to this research directly by uh, sending me a kit at the end, I, or sending me a genetics report, and I will send you a kit, and at the end I'll show you how to do that. But what's nice about it is, and we've got a lot of participation from uh, this particular group, is that you know you can you can just contribute at your own home when the tooth falls out, and we really really value that. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do with these teeth, and so my interest in uh, Prader-Willi syndrome actually comes from another disorder that's a duplication of this same region. And I started working on dupe 15 q syndrome uh, now like 13 years ago. And the reason is because they have a high incidence of autism in that particular syndrome. And so I've recently moved into um, Prader-Willi syndrome research primarily um, with a focus on the, the autism aspects of the uniparental disomy kids. I don't know if you guys probably know what that is because the families are very informed here. So essentially, there's a gene that we work on in my lab called UBE3A, and there's another syndrome you're, I'm sure you're familiar with called Angelman syndrome, which is loss of UBE3A. Then as we go up, and we get into the Prader-Willi maternal UPD cases, there's increased levels of UBE3A, and then there's even more in the duplication kids. So what we've done is we've sent these kits out, and this is our some current data on autism diagnosis that we we do remotely using a questionnaire. And we have three uh, UPD kids that are on the autism spectrum and about eight that are not. And then the deletion class uh, lines that we have, um, essentially we, we, we were very strict in this cutoff, but essentially all of them are not ASD. So we've, we've been able to do a, a little bit of information using this survey as to whether uh, your child has ASD or not, and we, that puts them in a category for our research, and then we grow up the cells and we do research, and I'll show you with some of that right now. So uh, what we're talking about are these little yellow dots inside of the tooth. These are the dental pulp stem cells, and uh, the reason that we, we started this study is essentially because it's, it's very easy to obtain them. Everybody has kids who lose teeth, and well, most, almost everybody, and so when the teeth fall out, um, you can put them in a tube and send them to us, and we can grow them immediately. We actually don't have to use any viral transduction. Um, and we can differentiate these cells into neurons in the laboratory and make many, many different cell lines from either many individuals, or sometimes we have multiple lines from one individual, which is also valuable for us. So um, if you're interested in such things, I'm sure Teresa can get you uh, these papers that on how we grow them and on other neurogenetic diseases you can study using uh, dental pulp stem cells. Um, this is what they look like. So they look like these flat, what we call fibroblast looking cells when they're growing in this undifferentiated stem cell state. And then we can um, coax them into this phenotype where essentially they, they look and molecularly act and even in some ways physiologically act like neurons. Um, and this would be what we would consider a, a DPSC neuron. These cells look, look a little more like astrocytes, if you might have heard of those. So we actually get mixed cultures, which is a good thing. Your brain is made up of glia and neurons. It's not just neurons. So they tend to be sort of a natural um, culture that looks a little, for us, a little bit more like what might be happening in the brain. So when we do our studies, we get very nice molecular data that we think is reflecting what's actually going on in the brain. Um, these bottom panels, I just wanted to show you, I have a collaboration with another um, funded investigator uh, through this organization, and he has sent me um, these oligos that are pieces of DNA that match um, what are uh, genes that I'm sure you guys have heard of, SNORD-116 and SNORD-115. So, we, we were able to actually get those pieces of DNA into these neurons, and that's these little red dots, and some of them you can see overlap quite well with the cell body. Uh, so we're, we're trying some experiments to see if we can add back this snord that's missing and see if 
were able to rescue some of the uh, defects, the molecular defects that are caused by loss of SNORD. Um, just going to show you briefly that we get a lot of participation. Interestingly, I did this on a Mac as well, and now it's in Farsi. <laughs> or it's Thai. It looks like Thai. I think it's Thai. So, um, you know, is it Hindi? Can you read it? No. You want? Okay. So, um, really, the point of this slide is not to look at the date of birth, so that's fine. But we have a variety of, uh, of ages, we have a variety of, uh, we have males and females in the study. And what we have actually right now is quite a few uh, uniparental disomy kids, but still not quite enough. So this is where I plea for you guys to uh, participate, contact us with a genetics report. Um, although I would love to send you guys a kit if your kid is like, you know, 18 months old, it's gonna be a while before they lose teeth, so I'm, I'm kind of, looking for kids that are losing teeth or they have loose teeth, then that's a really good time to get a kit because the kit actually doesn't last forever either. So um, we're doing well, but we need to get a few more teeth. Um, this is sort of an overview of, of what I told you. And the, the goal for me in, initially has been focusing on um, autism, but because I've been coming to this meeting and I've been talking to people, I've actually branched out into several collaborations even during this meeting because I have this resource, so people want to do different things with these stem cells, so we're starting to expand how we use them. So if you, if you donate your cells to the repository, one of my goals is to share them with other investigators who are doing different things who could use these cells. So um, finally, I'll just show you actually not an updated picture because my graduate student is in the audience. I'll just point her out somewhere, wave, yeah. So that's Caitlin. She's a new grad student who works on dental pulp stem cells and takes very good care of them and is very dedicated to her cells. So I wanted to show you this is the, the sort of an updated photo, but that's Caitlin who you might have contact with. And this information will make sure, I think it's probably up on one of the websites and you can get access to it. And just contact me directly with the genetics report and we need that to get started. And then we need your mailing address and we'll send you a kit. With that, I'll, I'll finish up.